Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. In the last video, we got the body finally down from the tree because we went through to the docks. We did a little bit of bartering and Measurehead came and I got the body down and I didn't have to agree to open the door for what's his name? Kurtry, Nurtry, Er... Er, Ertrude. Gertrude and Ertrude. Anyways, so our main task now, because I've decided to keep hold of the body to see if we can find out what's going on with it, is we obviously need to find ourselves a um, a refrigerator. Now, Kuno seemingly knows about refrigerator. However, before we talk to Kuno about it, because I don't really want to talk to Kuno about it, there was, I think it was over here. Let me have a little look. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Revachol Ice City. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. Oh. So what's my plan here, <laughs> other than talking to Kuno? You need to buy yourself more time. Fridge will allow you to ask the whirling freet. Oh okay, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go ask at the, the whirling. Kuno is my, my last resort, essentially. <laughs> so we're gonna go ask the chef. You got a big old fridge, you can stick a body in there. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Hey, I need a fridge to store a corpse, so are we are we are we good? Wait, let me just do something very quickly, by the way. Just need to do a little bit of volume edit on the music. Maybe not even that far. Just, just that. Just that. That's fine. Okay, cool. Now you fridge. The man keeps shaking his head. His eyes seem sad. Then he starts swiping crumbs off the countertop. I don't think he understands, officer. We need to find some other way to make ourselves clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need to get the corpse. Point to Kim into the fridge. Point to the fridge. I know, Kim, I know. Make stabbing motions at the meat on the copy. None of these are helpful. What language is he He's speaking? He's from Grad. A koiko. Koiko. With the mention of the word, koiko, the cook starts talking excessively, his hands up in the air again. He's from Grad. People from Grad don't mind if they're called by their national derogatives. It's okay to call him a koiko. I need to put a dead body in this fridge. Oh, no, no. Body no fit fridge. Fridge more. Maybe it's a small body. No, no. I know. Oh. Okay, we have our answer. It won't fit. We need a bigger fridge. He's probably right, to be fair. Uh, but Leo said you're friends with Manyanya. Is that true? Manyanya. Manyanya is, of course, the uh, very en français guy hanging out by the docks. The mention of Manyana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then... He falls silent again. Now, fun fact, I mentioned in the last couple of videos there was Borscht. It was on the list for the union owner, the union leader guy, right? Um, and I was unsure what Borscht is. Borscht is, I, funnily enough, I made it like two days ago. It's like a beetroot soup, basically. And traditionally, it's like sour and hot and weird. Um, it looks kind of disgusting. I made more like a Borscht-inspired soup. That was a beetroot soup with various other borscht type things in, but it looked slightly less disgusting. <laughs> I'm sure it's lovely, but I'm not sure about it. But either way, it was just funny that I was asking what borscht was, and then I just happened to cook it. It wasn't planned or anything, I just happened to cook it later that night. Anyways. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his, and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Mercury rising. Mm. Or need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Of course, vodka. Now that makes a very, very special borscht indeed. Turn it up and then ask for some yourself. No electrochemistry. Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. No, no vodka. Turn your fingers counterclockwise. Cut it. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. What did we achieve there? Special borscht. Well, we figured it out, and we've kind of toned it down. I figure getting everyone absolutely hammered 
probably doesn't <laughs> doesn't lead to anything good. I still do want to re I, I know I talk about this a lot, but I love the idea of replaying the game as like a drunken, alcoholic, drug addled, megalomaniac, violent cop. Okay, well, this was a bust, but hey, let's go check in at the Freet, and then I guess if all else fails, we'll talk to freaking Kuno. It's worth noting that every time I have a conversation with someone, I do, um, uh, I spend time. The time is very much off the essence right now, so. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Do you have a fridge? Mm-hmm. Right behind you. You're right. This is a fridge. Wicked. Yeah. Any store cops there? Um, you're joking, right? No, I'm not joking. I need to store the corpse of a hanged man in your fridge. Um, okay. It wouldn't even fit, you know. No. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe a glass door fridge in a public grocery store isn't the best option for storing a corpse. <laughs> I guess you're right. Okay. <laughs> Look, they may have a valuable point. I just don't want to ask Kuno, okay? <laughs> like, surely that's an understandable motivation. I'm aware that you can hear me clicking during this. I'm trying to... Uh, can I hold? Does that work? Oh, it does work. Okay, I'll do that. Although, it means I have to walk, but that's fine. It's very dramatic. Do, 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 do. All right, Kuno. Who is this woman on the roof? Oh, we've got to bear in mind that 9pm we're heading over to the, to the flats. Kuno! Kuno, I need a fridge. You missed a good show before. A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces. So, fun fact about this, YouTube has... It kind of happened a couple of months ago, but YouTube has been cracking down hard on the swearing, even more than they were in the past. Um, especially if there's excessive swearing throughout a video, you can get demonetized. Now, it hasn't happened to my videos yet. I'm probably not big enough potatoes on this channel to warrant such attention. Um, but Kuno could definitely push a video into unmonetizable territory. Funnily enough, Disco Elysium, actually, only about half of these videos so far are monetized. Um, there's a lot of music in this game that's clearly picking up the copyright censors. He fucked the tree up! Fucked it good! It was porno! Um... <laughs> this is also superficial, kids. The race mystery runs deeper... Oh god, right, 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 right. I gotta think about this. No, I'm not gonna, like... I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... <laughs> I'm not gonna... Wish I could have been here to see it. Now I have some questions. Shoot that shit at Kuno, pig or not? Okay, that went, that went pretty well. Back down, talk to Kuno else. Hmm. Kuno, I need a fridge to sash the body. For the fucking... Good thing you asked the Kunmeister. Kuno knows a fridge. Perfect for freezing... F I don't believe it. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno gets around. Where can I find this perfect fridge then? Bacon man's in a rush. But what's in it for the Kuno? What's the return on Kuno's investment? Huh. By killing in his territory, someone has openly challenged Kuno. It's in his best interest to put them in their place. Some arrogant shit thinks he can kill in the Kuno's kingdom without asking the Kuno first. That sounds like lawlessness to me. A dark flame smoulders in Kuno's eyes as he ponders your argument. Wordless, like kings do. <laughs> this outlaw's fate is in your hands. Let's make an example of him. Also, I won like a near 50-50, which is a goddamn miracle. Help him. Help me locate him using the fridge body technology. All right, Kuno, where's you? See that shit house over there? He points to the collapsed building with the bookstore. A cold comes over you as you glance behind him at the crumbling colossus there, casting a shadow on you. Yes, I see it. The big tall one behind you. You gotta get in that shit. In there deep. What do you mean, in there deep? Check the fucking basement, pig. Don't you know anything? <sighs> Always check the fucking basement, recon style. There's a giant fridge down there. Fucking will fit, no problem. It looks like a white bear or some shit. Try not to piss yourself when you see it. A white bear? A polar bear? How do I get in the building? Through the bookstore. You gotta beg the book bitch. 
Used to be you could get in there through the doorbell, jam that shit. Book bitch changed that. Kuno doesn't beg, so Kuno doesn't go there anymore. Yeah, book bitch, beggar. You stupid or son. He means the bookstore. We have to ask. Plaisance is the mother of the little girl peddling books on the plaza. We have to ask Plaisance in the store. Impressive note keeping, Lieutenant. See, the cloud gets it. Listen to your four eyed friend. Thanks, Kuno. You didn't hear it from Kuno, pig. But don't forget where you heard it from. <laughs> Kuno owns you now, pig. You're Kuno's property. Alright, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. You do care, really, though, Kuno. I know you do. So how? Wait, some follow up is how do the I get? The man <laughs> is decomposing visibly now. Oh no! Every hour, he looks less like a creature and more like a pile of intestines. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Okay. So let's go find the fridge. I guess. I should have just talk to Kuno first. I just didn't want to talk to Kuno first. <laughs> I think that's very understandable. To the bookstore to talk to Plaisance. I was talking. Oh wait, no, no. Efficiency is necessary. Every time I talk to someone, the body rots further. Oh, that's what this is. Okay. Hey. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I was told there's a huge fridge in the building cellar. Can you lead me there? A fridge? No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? For whatever reason. She's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. Farewell for now, book peddler. I mean, this is clearly where it is, but she's going to see me. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Screw it. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? <laughs> okay, I've heard there's a fridge there that I need. This is about the curse, that's why you're afraid. Mom, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. I don't care. Okay, Mom, this is, I'm a police officer. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. <clears throat> she stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, blaff baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly, not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. This is about the curse? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. I have to go, I'm sorry. No, please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Lies. Rip them open, we say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Okay, but I mean, the body's rotting. Thought complete white morning. I don't really know what this was about. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in a matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning of modern death. Divorce or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller. Make him less you. 20% zoom out distance. That's a weird one. Okay. Huh. I mean, that's interesting. I quite like that. All right, we're gonna talk, but Hello time again, is important. Officer, and welcome to crime, Stop it. romance, and biographies of famous people. She's consistent. I'll give her that. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. 
I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the book. <laughs> if it's just a storage room, then why does it have a 70s ward protecting it? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed. Just like Annette said, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. Host of hosts, she prays. Guard me and my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does the curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Annette mentioned that the previous tenants had experienced financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Demon's favourite food, yeah. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. I need to get the body in the fridge. I can't fuck around with curses. Most certainly not. I'm not letting you open the gates of hell. In fact, I don't want anyone who isn't familiar with the psychic arts involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A para detective. Alternatively, convince her to let you investigate. Said curses aren't real. Whoopsie daisy. On a quest to freeze the body. Come on, 72%. Slither up to her, you silver tongued fiend. <clears throat> Show her what world class perfidy looks like. You know what? To freeze a body, I'll lie any day. <laughs> Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I have returned from the void, a para detective from a long line of para detectives. You're no para detective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but. You look like one. Hey now. Hey. 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 You need the booze to focus, all right? Like your chemistry so warm and comforting. <laughs> Just trying to lure me in constantly. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing, or you see it's necessary to drink the spirits to contact the void. Which one do I think is more convincing? That one. How do you know all this? Here we go. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The Semenes blood also runs through me. You're part Semenes. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. That's me. I'm the hand of fate. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Will Kim vouch for me? I'm not sure he will be very convincing. No problems whatsoever, your family's safe. The Phantoms are no match. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honour. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The Entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Thank you, Drama. Of course, the Entity. I've sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? I feel like we need to go along with all the cockamamie nonsense she's talking so chimney. Like maybe there is someone living here. It's very much calling to mind that it's a horror film that I watched. I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called, but their twin brother. It's kind of like that episode of Simpsons, you know, where Evil Bart lives in the attic, and it turns out he actually isn't Evil Bart, and Evil Bart is normal Bart. But um, he lives in the walls, and he's like doing freaky stuff, and ends up killing people from inside the walls. Maybe it's the same kind of deal. Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? 
Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. <laughs> Thank you, Inland Empire. What do you discover? Probably just office space and the damn fridge. Don't be scared. Farewell for now, book peddler. <laughs> I really want to integrate all these lines into my life. Imagine walking into Waterstones. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtain. Imagine walking into... Wait, Waterstones is like our big bookstore here in the UK. I don't know what other people have, but we have Waterstones. Imagine walking out of Waterstones. You just bought the latest James Patterson drivel. <laughs> you take your book out. Your farewell, book peddler. It would be amazing. They'd never let you win again. Dun, dun, dun. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! <laughs> oh God, here we go. God, there are a lot of wards. Ghostly silhouettes of hairdryers. No sane person would ever put their head in such a machine. <clears throat> a vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Really looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. <laughs> this game is so funny. This may be the funniest game I've ever played, which sounds bizarre considering some of the topics it deals with, but it is genuinely a so funny. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. It's funny that I could have just straight up broken if I wanted to, but... After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. You feel the tiny hairs on the back of your neck rise up, as if someone's standing right behind you. I know it's been funny and there's been jokey things going on, but I've got to say, if this was like a real thing going on here, and you were this detective and there was this cursed door that you were trying to find, that you were looking for a fridge to hide a body, not hide a body, to store a body, and it led you to a cursed door in the back of a bookstore. That's proper, like, that's like a David Fincher film right there, you know? An uneasy knot forms in the pit of your stomach. Touch the back of your neck, what is this feeling? Outside, the wind howls in from across the bay. The building at Rue de Saint Ghislaine stands like a matchbox on its side, with men inside, like little wooden sticks, ready to catch a fire. A panicking woman squeezes the pendant around her neck, until it leaves a mark inside her palm. A man, a few meters away, stands frozen with a key in his hand. Somewhere inside, a spider is spinning its web. Into darkness we go. Quite excited. Sand is dripping from a punching bag. A poster says Sitius Fortis. The rest is one off. Okay, well, we've got a little little gym. Get a hench, son. It smells like leather and sweat. Yeah, that sounds about right. A barbell lies on the floor. The colour has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Oh, I'm wearing high performance weightlifting gloves, apparently. Wait, let me just let me just check if I can do anything else for physical instrument before we do that. Physical instrument is nothing on there at all. My savoir has been uh, has taken a real hit though. Physical, oh, what's this? Inland Empire, M5, ba, ba, ba. I haven't really been using the, I wonder if there's more I could have used the crowbar for. And the flashlight as well. Maybe I should use the flashlight more. Oh, oh, look at that! Oh my god, yes, I'm all over this. Alright, any physical instrument at all? Yep, okay, let's get that on. Oh, and that. Oh, right. Oh, that's, that's, oh, wait, no, they're both physical instrument. And shivers, but mine's to authority. I think I'll just stick with the tank top. All right, let's give it a go. It's only 60 kilograms. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, 
like a dog for its master. I say only 60 kilograms. So 60 kilograms, let me think about this. It depends how he's going to try to lift it. Is he going to barbell curl it? Because 60 kilograms on a barbell curl is very, very, very hard. I could, I could not barbell curl 60 kilograms. I barbell curl 15 kilograms in each arm at the moment. Um, I don't barbell curl. I uh, dumbbell curl, but still. Barbell is slightly easier, so you would up it a little bit, but not 60. 60 is insane. Um, deadlift, however, 60 kilograms. I reckon most people could... It might hurt you a little bit, but most people could probably deadlift 60 kilograms. Most men. Most adult men could deadlift 60 kilograms. So that's not to say there's not women that could, of course. I'm just saying, on average, a man is going to be stronger. Let's do it. Oh, come on, game. This is going to hurt me physically, isn't it? You managed to hoist it off the ground, but the barbell feels wobbly and dangerous. Your hands slick with sweat. Turns out you're no beast, just an old man with bad form. Even your body has failed you. It's a miracle you didn't injure yourself. Weightlifting was never my favorite either. At the station gym, I mean. I prefer running. It clears your head. Look, it's trapped. There's no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would remove the collar? This should be a felony. <laughs> no one does until they get smashed into the barbell. Yeah, you can't. You don't, I mean, you're not going to lift it. I would not lift a barbell without collars. Oh, hello, Kim. Right. The barbell waits. Ah! I mean, I, I've won a 58. I guess I have to fail a 72. But I feel like I fail... On like like a, like a higher number than is realistic, you know what I mean? If I want this light, I mean it is pretty sweet. It feels very detective-y, you know. I need to buy more pills. One out wall bars, they look unsafe. But yeah, I mean he the deadlift form was not terrible. I've got to say, like the actual starting position for the deadlift wasn't bad. You get it up to your shins, feet. Shoulder width apart. It's always feet shoulder width apart. Everything in human history is feet shoulder width apart. Keep your back straight. More important than anything else, you don't arch your back. That's how you're going to ruin your back. And you are going to ruin your back at some point. It feels inevitable. What What's is up? this place? Looks like a gym. Oh, looks like this Artemiteps boxing club for young athletes. I think you're right. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Some specks of dust shimmer in a faint beam of daylight falling from the window. Other than that, the room is dark. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. <laughs> Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. Sounds good. <laughs> oh yeah, I really like this flashlight. Look at the shadows it's creating. Look at this, I'm a proper detective man. Alright, anyways. I'm probably going to change my clothing back. It's just that that I did, right? I think so. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. It looks like the remains of the 24-hour window shop. So this is where all the little shops were in the past, and they've all shut down. But why? Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. How good does this look? <laughs> it's so cool. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Love this. Airship rotors covered in spiderwebs. They remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso with strange yellow colour. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Skis with slipstream painted on the laminated top layer. Is this Emma's Atelier? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Mind if I do.
Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. I mean, there's definitely a an elven bearded warrior in the middle there with a sword. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin. And even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a welkin. One of the welkins towering among the rest appears to be different, however. Maybe, yeah, but maybe it's important. It's Vara Hamira, a high welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with welkin, green welkin, dread welkin, and the high welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. <laughs> one of them is a welkin supremacist. Mm -hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard too. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Well, it's been educational. Just look at those details. So much effort. I thought kids were going to be like, yeah, yeah, let's get a move on. There's a rotting corpse. But he actually seems intrigued. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms. Dead trees grown in under the snow. This game still consider. I I've been considering getting back into writing. It's been a little while. I find that I I've got really, like, a lack of time in my life these days. If I want to socialise... Record for this channel, record for the main channel, work out, which is an hour and a half, four days a week, five, six days a week if I do it properly. <laughs> um, I'm trying to watch a film every day for uh, my film challenge thing, and suddenly I'm like, I have no time, it's mad. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm, animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. But well, my point is, I want to get back into writing, whether that's continuing what I was writing in the past or writing something else. And this game both inspires me to write and makes me feel terrible <laughs> about the quality of my writing. Just little things about the trees groaning under the snow. It's, it's evocative, you know? You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cosy in its own way like eggnog or morphine a much needed respite from our own world a pinned postcard reads the heat death scenario a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun drifting through the universe this is a monthly calendar from the year 50. cryptic words like sprint daily minimi and gpi span the marker drawn grid the grand scheme of production and money. It looks a bit like an academic calendar, only much more brutal. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, see the prod schedule filament for details. Like I know right now the body's rotting and we should get a move on, but eh, <laughs> inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, <clears throat> but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and Heat death of the universe. You have to balance these things. You know, what's more important? A rotting, very important rotting cork corpse or 
an unfinished video game. <laughs> you know, Duke Nukem, unfinished forever, may well see the light of day and would be much more important. The full text reads, Heat death of the universe is the new black. Another note says, The biggest advancement in role-playing systems since the 30s. Outside, a cold wind wraps the building in its bosom. Snowflakes in the wind. An old woman passes what the locals call the doomed commercial area. She tries hard not to look at the bookstore windows. It's unwise. I wonder if I can not fix the area, but I wonder if, if I... Oh, creepy. Figure out what's going on here. We can kind of help the commercial area, undoom it. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. I mean, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Um, the interesting thing about this for me is that surely you don't have to do this. If we just sent the body off with Kitsuragi, would we have had any reason to come in here? Would we have just done it anyway for funsies? Obviously we could have come in here without the key. We could have come in here nothing to do with the fridge if we wanted to, but would we have would the story have brought us here if we hadn't kept the body around? I suspect not. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. <laughs> How do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are meant to look like? History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Getting something medical here? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Looks like a surveillance program. Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. This is like a, okay, if it's a game who's Whoever played... Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like... Is this like a, a nationwide D&D &D game kind of thing? A list of names under the stations suggests people across six Isolas would be playing Muindi, Insulinda, Kotla, Grad, Samara, and even Il Mara. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. I know Doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. What a fascinating little area this is. Scribbled across a notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. Oh, I'm outside. Oh. Oh, okay, right, before we do this. Oh, wait, no, oh, it's, it's the fridge! It's the fridge! I don't know why it's a bear, but it's a fridge. Oh, nice. Pill me up, Popper. What is that? Wait, now let's talk to the fridge first. <laughs> God, the eyes even glow. That fridge is amazing. You see a terrifying ice beer with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the beer's eyes are glowing red. Why does my fridge not look like this? I would love this for a fridge. This ice beer is a hyper carnivore. Be careful. I would think I'd have to have it outside, admittedly, but still. The beer looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Kim's a little nervous. It's a fridge, remember, Kim? Chill. Of course. 
a giant ice bear shaped fridge. <laughs> he relaxes his hand, his face bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Just what we were looking for. Let's see what's inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Let's check out this note first. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Never know when a little fridge magnet will come in handy. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. This is clearly the fridge. It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough too. Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. The two of you. Easily. Let's rock it, Kim. The body is heavier than you expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then, ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. I want to, I need to criticize this game the way that I criticize basically every game on the planet and that their audio balance sucks. Like why have you drowned out the volume? Like surely the voiceover is the most important audio there and it's at least equal in the settings with the game sound effects volume. So why can I not hear the audio? Why have you not balanced that correctly? And games do it all the time, all the time. Beautiful, a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. You have created an ice bear sarcophagus. <laughs> You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rites. <laughs> Behold, we have created an ice bear sarcophagus. Talk of the ice bear sarcophagus must not leave this world. <laughs> this is a glorious achievement. Oh, God. <laughs> this isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists. We did our best with the means at our disposal. Did we, though? Okay, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. How do you like it in the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Corporal Angelo. Thanks, buddy. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. Let's try this again, 28%, you never know. You touch the dead man's body. His skin is cold, light blue and silver in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin, or what to even do with him. It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. <sighs> what is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. They try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnival. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. I mean, for some, yeah, it's going to scare the kids away. But if I saw an ice cream fridge that looked like a giant polar bear, I think with red glowing eyes in particular, I think I'd be more willing to buy ice cream. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with a certain corpse situation. Hmm. Okay. Oh, let's have a look at this note. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, <laughs> so I had to hide it. 
somewhere safe. The illiterate ginger kid. You'll find the filament memory with the offside copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, silly <clears throat> swuff. What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. Offsite copy still here. So offsite copy. Remember, okay, who, I wonder who wrote that note. Someone who owns a radio computer. My guess is as good as yours, officer. Which is to say, not very good. This really? ginger kid. You don't have a single guess. You mean Kuna? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, <clears throat> he'd probably try to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. <laughs> do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Okay. I assume he wouldn't know, but I just wanted to click things. Um, do I have anything that's going to boost perception? Let's have a little peek. I don't think so. I think we've been through this already, haven't we? I don't want to keep just destroying my um my my morale and my health and everything the hammering perception to try and figure out what's going on with this goddamn corpse <laughs> but we're going to god damn it the once more onto the breach glowing red god damn it <laughs> it'll come to you sooner or later at least he's i'm up to 42 percent <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> Ah, oh, life is pain. I mean, perception is like a good one to have, but I don't really want perception to be six while everything else suffers greatly. Ah, oh, I'm sad. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace. Colouring. Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. Oh no, the chimney! She lives in the chimney! No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Okay. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. The echo is so prominent. It's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What are you doing? I'm not sure, Ken, but I think I hear someone talking upstairs. Wait. Really? You should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Yell hello into the furnace. <laughs> Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... Hello? Hello? Okay, I was a little nervous there because I thought, you know what, it's a check, so I have to... Assume that passing a check seems like a good thing, but then I thought, well, is this not a bad idea? Should I not just go up there and not let them know I'm here, kind of thing? <clears throat> Hello, are you there? Speak to me. Hello? Did you say anything? I can't hear you. Please come up there. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. I'll open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Kick it. Why would I smear my hands with coal? Don't know. Let's let's just. I'm just gonna remember that. There may be a reason later on, you know. An ice cream maker, defrosted and unplugged. That's not what I was looking for. The music in this place is terrifying. Right, I wanted to go back the other way, but we'll, we'll do that later. Gotta keep an eye on the time. Is this the thing? The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway. Okay. Oh. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. I'm glad that, like, the game was clearly going to tell me to use a flashlight anyway, but I just kind of thought to use it in the first place. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. Where it's too we? dark to see in. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cachet. Look, Kitsuragi, there's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. 
Interesting. Do you want to take a look? I do want to look in the hole. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spiderwebs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Rifles! In the hole! Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Oh, I was hoping it would work. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Hmm. Me too. A broken bell mag grave from ages past. It's a four-shot bolt-action military rifle with a wooden frame. Worth eleven point three two, which is quite a lot. I wonder if I sell that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know whether I do. I, I, I'm kind of nervous to sell anything, you know, because who knows what's going to come in handy in this game? It's impossible to predict. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Oh, can we get the thing for it? This is where the this thing's hidden. This orange right? machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Okay, I don't want to churn it in case I break the um, the, the filament thing. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. Equip the pry bar. I, I could have figured this out, game. <laughs> Um, I mean, I was just saying a second ago that I need this. This orange machine is buzzing like Whoa. a old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer. That I'm not even gonna try. I'm not even gonna try because maybe it'll damage me physically. Maybe it'll break the pry bar or something. So we need something stronger than our current pry bar. Let's keep that in mind. Oh, no, Sfed, nice. I need some morale boosting, though. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice beer fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Okay, we're not going to unplug the, <laughs> the fridge, but the black one, if we unplug the um, the ice cream maker, maybe it'll melt. Oh, but that might damage the... Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? It's black. It's not like it's the red one. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. The theory is it'll defrost the machine. This orange machine is dead still. It has See? a hand crank ice points. cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting there you go see i know what i'm i know what i know what i'm doing I, I thought this through i mean my concern is that like i say it's gonna melt onto the thing inside but we'll see we'll see how it goes i did i did have a thought in my head <laughs> it wasn't just doing it for no reason oh plus drama insane mesh tank top <clears throat> okay we'll put down here very real at least we can pay uh guard Cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street. Alright, let's go upstairs and meet the entity. <laughs> oh. Oh! Oh. Okay. Interesting. So how... Where's, where's the staircase? <laughs> um, let's be back this way then. This is where it came, obviously, but it must be this way and then... T there's another doorway to the right-hand side. Down this. Uh, what's this? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. You think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Well, that's an answer to my question. I'm going to do it anyway. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing 
fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Interesting. Okay, so we need to get a memory thing. Isn't that what okay. we're getting from the ice cream machine? What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's just a failed business, son. Yes, that is the question. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work <laughs> on radio computers. Wow, done. <laughs> How are they planning to do that? Through call in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two way radio. It's not a particularly bizarre idea. This is like having a. Di I, that we are currently planning when a certain someone fixes their bloody computer. We're planning to have a D&D game over Discord. It's essentially an archaic equivalent. Then there's the Game Master Frequency that listens in on the smaller calling stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. He's a little nerd, isn't he? Not to my <clears> knowledge. <throat> They make automated games in Gard, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. It's a role-playing game. Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. It's funny seeing the Weevil, like it's an obscure thing, whereas the Rivel, was the Rivel is like a few miles up the M1 from me. <laughs> it might not be the M1, I don't know what it is. It could be the M1, it could be the M3, it could be the M6. It's the M something, I'll tell you that much. M meaning a uh, motorway. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Indeed. It's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... <laughs> okay, so I don't like... The world is cold and lonely. This would keep a company. Let's finish it. We, obviously, how are we going to finish it? It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Ah, he wants to do it, though. Okay, let's keep moving. Got a little XP. How am I doing on my XP? I feel like I've got loads lately, but apparently not. I can't I can't read what that text says at all, unfortunately. What's that over there? I didn't see that. I don't think I right clicked when I came in this room. You gotta right click. Gotta right click. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look. The skis and rotor blades both bear the same Slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, which should they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. What a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Reality is ruthless. Yeah. Well, we just got a... I think it's not the one that we were looking for, obviously. That's in the thing. But production schedule, filament memory. So can we put that in the machine? There's a cube. Also, was this all here last time? <laughs> I just somehow missed all of it. Tiles on the cube are still like a smooth drawer. The filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Oh no. It was already glowing and now it's also making a sound. It's probably some alien co like technology. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Darkest accident on Rue de Saint-Gueslaine. This is East Inflindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Are they alive? What is the production schedule? What? 
the filament you have inserted into the reader. Thanks. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. This is the police. Please open this thing. I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder for trust accident. Without filing a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? Is it my birthday? No. <laughs> a hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Maybe it is. Still no. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. That sounds bad. A login attempt. Something a criminal would do. <laughs> don't worry. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Why did you call me Fortress after all? Fortress accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalogue before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCR produces revolutionary interactive calling radio games. That's what the catalogue says. That's not bad. So conceptual. Hmm. <laughs> and what's that, this interactive calling radio game? Any other questions? What are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old, and my name is Yvonne. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. <laughs> if one of my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian Station. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Maybe I can flirt my way to this password. On an island on the River Esperance, a small woman, all skin and bones, sits in a room filled with audio equipment. Thousands of tiny lights are reflected back from her prescription lenses, like stars in the dark. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for this accident. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. The filament slides out of... Okay, so we need to keep an eye out and try to find a password in our, in our journey. <clears throat> Basically. Hmm. But at least we know there's a radio computer, we know we've got the filament, and now we're gonna go talk to the entity upstairs. Well, next video. Um Yeah, I feel like we got a lot done today. That was successful. We got the new we got the filament thing, we've got the rifle, we got the body into the, the fridge more importantly, I guess. A good day to die hard. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Oh, so tired. Next video we're gonna head upstairs and meet the ghost. Cheers, my love, as always. Bye-bye.